fanboys be warned. I am going to bring up my one big problem with this anime. Yeah, I might get some backlash for it from the dedicated fans, but I don't care, because when I do these reviews, I don't pull any punches. Haha. Ha ha. ha. See what I did there? I made a I made a punching gag in my in my boxing anime review. Ha <laughs> ha. It's it it's clever. Okay, look. Everyone who reviews this show is going to do a punching joke in it. I at least got mine out of the way quickly, like I did it in the first round. See, I did it again! I made another boxing pun. Anyways, so Megalobox is a anime from the spring 2018 season, and I'm sure you all know this because this was one of the biggest anime of the season. It's one of the most popular shows around right now, and it's pretty damn deserving of this. This series is amazing. It's definitely a contender for best of the year, and that is awesome for many reasons we're about to bring up. First up, let's use the plot as a good reason for why this show is amazing. So the show takes place in sort of this, I guess, near future kind of dystopian or just kind of crappy city area, and it basically follows this guy, Joe, or at least we think that's what his name is, as he tries to make it to Megalonia, the biggest boxing tournament to ever be held, so he can fight Yuri, this giant hulking boxer guy, and that's it. There's literally nothing else to this plot. I mean, yeah, there's the whole thing that in the future, boxers wear this, like, metal armor thing on them to, like, make the fights even more intense and more crazy, but... That's really not a lot of plot or story going on. And that's kind of amazing. So many anime nowadays, and just TV shows in general, try to bog everything down with excess story, excess plot, and you can really only get away with simple stuff and slice of life stuff. I guarantee you under different circumstances they would have gone into Joe's past, they would have spent a lot of time on everyone's own personal drama, but nope. Everything is just about the boxing match. We learn one or two little things about characters, but for the most part, everything is focused. This is minimalistic storytelling at its best. We don't even know if our MC's real name is Joe. <laughs> like, literally, he just picks that name for himself at one point. It's hinted that that's his real name, and it's hinted he had some sort of tough past before this, but it doesn't matter, and the story doesn't really spend or feel any need to go into it. It knows it can just entertain you with what's in front of you as you just watch his adventures to go on to fight Yuri and deal with all these crazy, kooky fighters with all their crazy body armor stuff. And that's another thing the show excels at. The designs in this are great. The character designs especially are awesome because they have this very lived-in look to them. Everyone feels like they've been through some shit and the designs don't feel like they're just meant to sell figures or to appeal to the mass media. Looking at any character for more than a few seconds, you can get a total idea of who this character is and all you'll ever need to know. The reliance on visual cues and all of that is astounding in this. And speaking of visuals, let's talk about that animation. Everyone was talking about the way this show looks when it came out. For those of you who don't know, most of what people saw before this anime came out was this poster. Just this very not telling image of Joe ready to get into the ring. And yeah, that was clearly done on purpose because they wanted the visuals to pop. This show is clearly harkening back to classic 90s anime, and you could make the argument in doing that is also harkening back to classic boxing movies, like that sort of gritty, grimy, lived-in look, and I love it. I've said several times in these reviews that I'm a big fan of that 90s anime look, like that sort of gritty, lived-in world that came from having little budgets and came from having to have stuff done quickly, that desire to, maybe you can't make it look necessarily perfect, but you can figure out how to infuse the world with character and make it stand out and be remembered. That's done here. Because remember, we only have two settings in this show. We have general city look and we have desert look. But just like with the character designs, every time you look at a background or a scene in this show, you get such a feeling of everything that's gone on. You feel like this world is desolate, you feel like there's a dreariness to it, a griminess to it, and at no point do they ever waste like an episode on life is tough. 
everything is in front of you, everything is given to you just through your own ability to recognize it. A show that respects the audience intelligence like that is really rare these days, especially from visuals, and I'm really glad a show like this did it. The technique for how they did this was, I think it was something crazy, like they did everything in HD, lowered the resolution, brought it back, did this crazy stuff, all to get that perfect look and feel, and it succeeds so insanely well. The fights themselves are pretty entertaining. You're always invested. You always kind of like what's on screen. And the show feels brisk. It's 13 episodes, so it goes by quickly. And the way it sort of keeps you going and always wants you to see what happens next and the way it makes you want to root for Joe really does a great job of making it go by quickly. I really can't stand anime where it just feels like a schlog to get through because there's only one thing going on. But no, this show handles its very straightforward linear plot very well. The characters themselves are also very good. As I said, you don't learn anything about them, but they do a good job of keeping everyone likable. Joe, you expect. At the beginning, I was afraid he was going to fall into the jerk category, but he is very likable and is shown to be a good guy at heart. Uh, you also have his trainer, who I thought was going to be an asshole, but I I really liked him. You have the annoying kid, Sachio, who actually isn't annoying. He's actually really good. And then you have Yuri. It would have been so easy to just make this guy the bully, the rich asshole who thinks he's the greatest person in the world, can't be beat, can't fall, blah, blah, blah. But no. What's awesome about Yuri is that He's very similar to Joe. He's this boxer who's looking for the next fight. He has this deep respect for anyone who can get into the ring with him. He has a very likable, charming personality, and I liked it every time we focused on him. Again, it shows the show's ability to respect the audience that it can make everyone likable and not give you the need to feel like you have to hate somebody. The only sort of character I would have liked a bit more out of is the lady who's head of Team Shirato, or whatever the fuck they were called. Um, I didn't really feel like she served any purpose at all. <laughs> And there's this weird subplot that she's trying to sell her new style of armor, this uh, integrated armor that Yuri wears. She's trying to sell that to the military. That goes nowhere. <laughs> That's literally brought up twice and never again. Uh, as for negatives, there's really only one problem with this show. And it's not overly huge. I think it's, it's done to the best of its ability, but... It bugged the hell out of me. And also, slight spoiler for like the fourth episode or whatever the heck. Uh, but here we go. I think the concept of Joe being gearless is corny. <laughs> Like, the whole idea that they build up, this show is about technology mixed with man, mixed with the heart of a machine, mixed with the will of a human, all that good stuff. And that's like, nope, no gear. Gearless Joe. Uh, he's just getting in the ring with people who have car engines on their backs. And it's just like, I don't need gear. It kind of felt like a cheat. Like, I was really curious to see how they would figure out how to give him the edge, how that combination of man and technology would work, and we don't get that. And yes, people have done videos about how it's to show that Joe is the real deal. You don't need extra. You just need the heart of a true athlete, that kind of thing. I don't care. <laughs> I don't like sports. Um, it's just that it just kind of feels like a cheat to me. Like, this whole show, they build up what is technology and all this stuff, and then it's just kind of thrown to the wayside. It also creates a situation, and this was a problem a lot of people had with this, is a lot of people felt the fights were lackluster. They felt this way because the physics didn't really, or at least this is what I think. And yeah, the fight choreography, I think, could have been a little better, but considering it's boxing and you don't have a lot of space... Um, but I feel the big problem is that because Joe doesn't have armor and because he's getting punched by people covered in armor, his head should be taken off like within the first five minutes. There is no way you can survive one punch from any of this, but he just takes it and just gets up five seconds later. And I know it's supposed to be, he's the underdog. You're supposed to root from, I know all that. It just creates a situation. I can't ever really believe what's going on. <laughs> Like, because it's, the physics just isn't there. Like, his head should be liquid with, like, it's just, I don't know, it's hard to describe. It's just one of those things to where I just felt like, if this is what the show is about, then that's what it should be about, or it should make sense. Like, maybe make it the problem is he can never take a direct hit, or maybe he does take a direct hit at one point and it almost nearly kills him, but the worst he has is, like, he, he has kidney problems for, like, five minutes and just shrugs it off. 
Also, the ending kind of annoyed people. I won't spoil it here, but considering what I just said about the inherent cheesy and corniness that's worked into the main plot of this, uh, I think it's fine, really. I liked it. I prefer that kind of ending nowadays, especially with kind of the current anime climate I feel like we're going into. But that's what I thought about Megalobox. It's an amazing show. It's fantastic. If my biggest problem only bothered me once in a while, then that's really the hallmark of a great show. Because all shows have problems, as we will probably discuss next week with Darling and the Franks. Um, but when a show can move past that and still keep you entertained, that's great. Tell me what you think about Megalobox in the comments section below. And as always, click to like, click to subscribe, and well, Darling and the Franks is the next anime review, people. Be prepared.